Channing by John Greenleaf Whittier. Not vainly did old poets tell, nor vainly did old genius paint God's great and crowning miracle, the hero and the saint. For even in a faithless day can we our sainted ones discern, and feel, while with them, on the way, our hearts within us burn. And thus the common tongue and pen, which worldwide echo Channing's fame as one of heaven's anointed men, have sanctified his name. In vain shall roam her portals bar, and shut from him her saintly prize, whom in the world's great calendar all men shall canonize. By Narragansett's sunny bay, beneath his green embowering wood, to me it seems but yesterday, since at his side I stood. The slopes lay green, with summer rains, the western wind blew fresh, and free, and glimmered down the orchard lanes, the white surf of the sea. With us was one, who calm and true, life's highest purpose understood, and like his blessed master, knew the joy of doing good. Unlearned, unknown to lettered fame, yet on the lips of England's poor, and toiling millions dwelt his name, with blessings evermore. Unknown to power or place, yet where the sun looks o'er the Carib Sea, it blended with the freeman's prayer and song of jubilee. He told of England's sin and wrong, the ills her suffering children know, the squalor of the city's throng, the green fields want and woe. O'er Channing's face, the tenderness of sympathetic sorrow stole, like a still shadow, passionless, the sorrow of the soul. But when the generous Briton told how hearts were answering to his own, and freedom's rising murmur rolled up to the dull eared throne, I saw Metot a glad surprise thrill through that frail and pain worn frame, and kindling in those deep, calm eyes a still and earnest flame. His few, brief words were such, as move the human heart, the faith sown seeds, which ripen in the soil of love, to high heroic deeds. No bars of sect or climb were felt, the babel strife of tongues had ceased, and at one common altar knelt the Quaker and the priest. And not in vain, with strength renewed, and zeal refreshed, and hope less dim, for that brief meeting, each pursued the path allotted him. How echoes yet each western hill and vale with Channing's dying word? How are the hearts of freemen still by that great warning stirred? The stranger treads his native soil and pleads, with zeal unfelt before, the honest right of British toil, the claim of England's poor. Before him time wrought barriers fall, old fears subside, old hatreds melt, and stretching o'er the sea's blue wall, the Saxon greets the Celt. The yeoman on the Scottish lines, the Sheffield grinder, worn and grim, the delver in the Cornwall mines, look up with hope to him. Swart smiters of the glowing steel, dark feeders of the forge's flame, pale watchers at the loom and wheel, repeat his honored name. And thus the influence of that hour of converse, on Rhode Island's strand lives, in the calm, resistless power which moves our fatherland. God blesses still the generous thought, and still the fitting word, he speeds and truth, at his requiring taught, he quickens into deeds. Where is the victory of the grave? What dust upon the spirit lies? God keeps the sacred life, he gave, the prophet never dies.